and welcome to Court of the EDI Jester. How the hell are you doing? Oh, hey, he's got a doozy. Oh, hey, he's got a doozy. We've got, we can thank our GM. One of my shoulders is longer than the other. Is it just how I'm sat? I don't know. <laughs> James S is, you know him? Yeah, we know James, a thoughtful therapist. What was he uncovered now? Well, Barking Mad. James has done a brilliant expose of At Pets at Home. Who have gone completely gender Kool-Aid. I'm just crazy. Crazy! It's the only way to describe it. The title of the, of the piece by James S. is Barking Mad, the Ideological Capture of Pets at Home. It's delicious. <laughs> James S. Yep, yeah, right. So I, I have reported, says James, on the ideological capture of many large corporations over recent years. However, one market, and I had hoped perhaps naively, would not be quite so captured, was the pet industry. Given that they deal in the business of animals rather than humans, I presumed there would be less identity politics at play. Oh, foolish boy, James, foolish boy. Enter Pets at Home. Founded in 1992, Pets at Home is one of the largest pet retailers in the UK. They are listed on both the London Stock Exchange and the FTSE 250 Index. In total, they have 453 stores across the UK, including 394 veterinary surgeries. So this is a, they're a big player in the, in the sort of, you know, animal world. <clears throat> I, have already, I was already aware of some of Pets at Home's public pandering to gender ideology. For example, they are signed up to Stonewall's Equality and Inclusion Index. Every time, Inclusion Index, and recently, to their delight, jumped from the ranking of 339 to 257. I suggest to Pets at Home, if you stick in there, you'll end up as number one, because you'll be the only one on it. <laughs> then it's easy to get it, isn't it? What march did they get out of 100, says Stonewall? I'll just check. Seven. Right, that makes them number one then. Yeah. But there's nobody else, is there? No. <laughs> <clears throat> it was also recently reported and celebrated by those morons over at Pink News that on their job application forms, they directly ask candidates, are you trans? <laughs> This so ties in with that nut job from the Chartered Institute of Personnel Development. She's their store going, that's a non-binary guinea pig there. Yep, yeah, this is, ah, oh, yes, I can see, you've got, that's pretty beautiful. You, uh, yes, that's a lovely dog. It's, it's, called a, it's called a Rottweiler, but this particular one is trans. <laughs> We've got some stick insects over there. Don't mention those. In their, sustainability, in their sustainability report from 2023, Pets at Home were also proud to celebrate that fact 14% of staff identified as look a bit too cute. 14%. Significantly higher than those who identify as such in the general population. However, until a whistleblower from within Pets at Home contacted me, I had no idea just how bad things were within the organisation. The material reference below was provided to me by this whistleblower and they've asked to remain anonymous as they fear losing their job if pets at home discover their identity. St standard story, when the CIPD whistleblower came to me, standard story. So they've got like a practice colleague handbook and then there's a picture here, diversity of inclusion, 10 ways you can make a difference and it's got a picture of a woman holding a dog, which is appropriate for a pet shop. This handbook sets out to members of staff and policies the policies and terms and conditions they must adhere to at work. Pets at Homes describes this as our expectation of you, of you as one of our colleagues. At the beginning, this reads like any other corporate virtue signalling manifesto, which unfortunately are ten a penny these days. Pets at Homes state. Diversity and inclusion is the important part of who we are and what we do. You can imagine people just go, oh, f f f f <laughs> whenever they start reading it, right? We aim to create an inclusive experience for our colleagues where everyone can connect to our purpose. I, you, I'd keep, I'd keep your hands off your purpose if I was you. <laughs> Our purpose. Be themselves and make their best contribution. Contrib be the, be, make, their, make their best contribution to our business. Be themselves. That's your, is it, bring your old self to work. <laughs> so far, so dull. Although one notes that pressure to conform already being applied. The first sign that things are not as they should be is under a section which states a list of characteristics that pets at home view as protected within the organisation. This list, surprise, surprise, ladies and gentlemen, is not in line with the Equality Act due to 2010. For example, it specifies gender identity rather than the protected characteristic of gender reassignment. It also specifies religious beliefs, whereas the Equality Act also protects philosophical beliefs. 
under which gender critical beliefs fall. This distinction will become crucial later on in the article. Very quickly, the indoctrination at Pets at Home ramps up as employees are directed towards a guide on how to be a better ally, entitled 10 Ways You Can Make a Difference. Oh, it just makes it, it makes the bile rising, you know, it's... Uh. Once I started to delve into this guide, I was shocked by what I saw, says James. Pets at Home provides a list of terms that they believe staff should be aware of in order to be inclusive. There are various accompanying images of pets and their owners with taglines including Diversity is being invited to the party. Inclusion is, inclusion is being asked to dance. As long as you're not in a wheelchair. Well, you can dance, can't you? I don't know what they're thinking. These great sweeping statements that could not apply to many people. It's absolutely deranged. This, of course, is cringeworthy. However, it also places subtle yet deliberate pressure on staff members by suggesting that respecting or including people is not enough, that something more is required from them. The guide itself is filled to the brim with gender ideology terms, including cisgender, here we go, <laughs> cisgender, gender fluid. Don't try not to get that on your trousers, boys. <laughs> Careful where you spray your gender fluid. <laughs> Oh, intersectionality. Oh, come on. Really? Look up at the queue. Non-binary. Psychological safety. Oh, good, good, good. Right. The suggestion that people are psychologically unsafe if they express an opinion and we are judged for it is extremely worrying. Transitioning and transphobia. This is particularly harrowing. It suggests that staff members that refuse to affirm another's belief that they have changed sex will amount to transphobia. So you're being forced by pets at home to be involved in this other in this person's crackers belief system. So you, you either do it, you either play the game, you either do the belief thing, or you know we'll come for you. That's what it sounds like to me. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Diversity is being invited to the dance. Inclusion is being asked to. Years ago, right? I worked in a in a in a business that was run by a couple of alpha male men who were incredibly stupid. And I got really angry with them <clears throat> because they put up a snakes and ladders board. It was all to do with sales, right? They put up the snakes and ladders board where somebody made a sale, rolled the dice and you go up the board. And if you, if, at certain points they had to do different things. And one of the things they had to do was 10 press ups, 10 press ups, right? And I lost my temper with them because there were two people in a wheelchair in the, in the office. I was like, you can't do that. Yeah, but they don't have to do it. It's like, that's not the... You know, it was... They had no concept of what they were doing. This is the same as the woke. They have no concept of what they're doing. Terrible thing to do. We've then got what comes up next. Well, surprise, surprise, white privilege. Understanding your own privilege. A guide to sharing pronouns. It is absolutely deranged. So I'll put the link to the article in the Dubris as usual. Go and have a look, because he's got all the images there. It'll blow your mind. Pets at home, anybody who does business with them is absolutely helping them to shore up the cracker's belief system that damages children psychologically, socially, educationally, intellectually, physiologically, in every single way. Anybody who shops, stop shopping at pets at home. That's all you've got to do. We've got a boycott them. Because you go in there and you want some straw for your guinea pig. I went in there once. I used to have pets. I don't keep pets. I had fish for a while, but I don't keep them anymore. They're not very good at conversationalists. So I was in there once with a mate of mine who went in to get some stuff for his dog. He's got one of these dog things. And there was this little child looking at the guinea pigs and getting terribly excited. And I leant over and whispered in the child's ear, that's the national dish of Peru, you know. <laughs> I'm a wicked, wicked man. Go on. As if you didn't know that already. Go and have a look at it. James written a brilliant article. There's a lot more to it, I tell you. Go and have a look. Come and be a warrior teacher. Starting in the next next few weeks, um, buy me a coffee if you can. It's the end of the month and my, April's my birthday. I don't know what to do yet. I think I might go out. We'll see. Uh, thank you very much for watching. See you all later, everybody. Have a great day.